What's up everyone, welcome back. There's no intro today, we're just going to jump right into this one. So for my main shot, I filmed a window with a green screen hanging outside of it. I also set a light up to the side of the green screen that was shining into the room. I put a few tracking markers on the green screen to help with the 3D camera tracking inside of After Effects. These were just green pieces of paper tape. Next, I wanted there to be a few objects floating around the room to make it look as if there wasn't any gravity and like we were in outer space. So I took a few objects and attached them to a light stand. Then I filmed each one of those objects individually in front of a green screen and slowly rotated the light stand. This works great to create 3D objects that you can put inside of your scene since you're actually rotating the object and you can see the lighting change as it rotates. I made sure to film these objects in similar lighting as the shot of the window so that the objects blended better into the scene. Next, I went to videocopilot.net and downloaded an awesome plugin for After Effects called VC Orb. This plugin is designed specifically to build 3D planets inside of After Effects. It's 100% free and that's just incredible to me because of how powerful it is and how simple it is to use. If you don't already know about videocopilot.net, make sure to check it out because it's an amazing site for people who are looking for great in-depth After Effects tutorials. After I downloaded the VC Orb plugin, I went to a site called solarsystemscope.com. They have great high resolution textures that you can use to build planets with. They have every planet in our solar system and even a few fictional ones. They also have the earth, the sun, and the moon. And I love this because you can easily download whichever texture you want and just load that into the VC Orb plugin inside of After Effects to create your planet. I will say, if your computer isn't the fastest, I would download the lower resolution 2K textures so it's faster to work with. But so, I went ahead and downloaded the Mars texture and the stars plus Milky Way texture. I'm going to use this stars texture to easily create a backdrop of stars for my scene. I'll leave the links for both the VC Orb plugin and the solarsystemscope.com textures down in the description below. But okay, now I'm all set and ready to jump inside of After Effects and start building my effect. Inside of After Effects, I imported all of my footage and have the main shot of the window added to a composition. First thing I did was reverse this footage. I shot this clip by starting close to the window and then slowly backed away from it. I did this so I could control where my ending point would be since I wanted the shot to perfectly move through a specific square on the window. To get the smooth motion, I used a homemade dolly which is just a piece of plywood with some roller skate wheels attached to the bottom. I'll leave a link in the video description below where I talk more about this DIY dolly. But so, I right clicked my footage layer, went to time, and selected time reverse layer. Now my shot is moving in towards the window instead of away from it. Then I right clicked the footage again, selected track and stabilize, and hit track camera then went up and selected Detailed Analysis and let that analyze. Once that was done analyzing, I selected Create Camera. Then I went to the Effects and Presets tab and typed in Key Light. I selected the effects Key Light, Key Cleaner, and Advanced Spill Suppression. All three of these are bundled together and I took those and dragged them onto my dolly footage layer. And then I used Key Light to key out the green. After I was done with that, I changed my view mode to Final Result, but doing that caused the footage to become very noisy. This can happen when you're using key light on a scene with not much light in it. So I changed the view mode to intermediate instead of final result and this tones down the intensity of the key light effect. But when I did this, you can see there's still some green spilling in through the window from the green screen. So to fix that, I came down to the advanced spill suppressor effect and turned that on, which got rid of the green spill. Also, the key cleaner effect I added helped out with these rough edges on the window. Without it, parts of the window were pretty jagged and looked a little funky. So the key cleaner just helped smooth all that out a little bit more. But okay, next thing that I did was add in the objects that I want floating in the scene. I started off with the footage of the camera and took that and added it to my comp, making sure to stack it on top of the dolly footage layer. And then I added key light, key cleaner, and advanced spill suppressor to that layer. I keyed out the green using key light and turned on the advanced spill suppressor for this layer as well. So after keying out the green, I selected the camera footage layer and made a mask around the camera, making sure to get rid of the light stand on the bottom. I keyframed this mask to move with the camera as I rotated it so I could get rid of the light stand for every frame. Then once I was done with that, I now had a 3D object that rotates inside of my scene. Next, I checked this box right here to turn it into a 3D layer. Now, usually when you do this and turn something into a 3D layer, it sticks perfectly in your scene and anywhere you move it, it will stay in that same spot. But that's only if your shot has enough information in it from when you tracked it using the 3D camera tracker. Since this shot was pretty dark and it's just a window with some bare walls around it, the camera tracker only picked up information from the window and the tracking markers on the green screen. This made it difficult for the camera tracker to completely map out the room. But that was fine for this scene because I can just animate the objects to move towards the camera as it's pushing in on the window. So to do that, I selected the camera object layer, hit P on the keyboard to bring up the position, and use the X, Y, and Z axes to position it where I wanted it in my scene. I can click and drag these to move the object around on any of the axes. The one all the way to the right is the Z axis, and the one that I use to push the object back away from the camera. You can hold down shift as you drag and adjust these numbers to move them in larger values. 
Then after I had the object positioned where I wanted it, I made sure I was at the beginning of the comp and hit the stopwatch to keyframe the position. Then I moved forward in the clip to the point when I wanted the object to no longer be on screen and adjusted the position of that object until it moved past the camera and out of frame. I also went into the rotation and adjusted the Z rotation, keyframing that to give it more movement so it's rotating as it's floating. And now when I play that back, you can see the object is floating as the camera passes by it. I also added the curves effect to this as well and brought the midtones down to match it with my scene better. Now I just repeated all of those same steps for each one of the objects that I wanted to be floating in my scene. After I was done adding all of the objects, next thing that I did was create my planet. To do that, I created a new composition and added a new solid layer, naming that solid Mars VC Orb. Then I went up to layer and added a new camera, making it 35 millimeters, and left all the other settings the same. And I also went up to layer one more time and created a new light, making sure it was a point light and I left all the other settings the same. Then next, I went to the effects and presets tab and typed in VC Orb and added that to my Mars VC Orb layer. Then I brought the image of the Mars texture into the comp and stacked it underneath everything. I right clicked that image, went to transform and selected fit to comp. Then I went ahead and turned this off because I don't need to see it. Next, I selected the Mars VC Orb layer and opened up the VC Orb plugin. and went down to the map settings and loaded the Mars texture image into the diffuse and bump map layers. And just like that, I've created Mars super quick and simple and now I just need to adjust a few things. First, I'm going to zoom in on the planet so I can see it better, and I can do this by hitting C on the keyboard. This will cycle me through the camera tool options, and I want to choose the Track Z camera tool, which looks like this. Then I can click and drag on the screen to zoom in on Mars, and this will help me with fine-tuning the details. Next, I selected my light layer and brought up the position. Then I adjusted the X, Y, and Z to move the light around my scene to change the shadow on the planet to exactly where I wanted it. You can adjust these to achieve the exact shadow you want on your planet, or just leave it alone if you don't want a shadow at all. After I was done creating the shadow, I selected my Mars VC Orb layer and adjusted a few more things in the VC Orb plugin. First, under the Material tab, I brought the specular all the way down to zero to get rid of the bright spot. Then in the Map setting, I adjusted the Diffuse Gamma and Diffuse Brightness to get the exact shading that I wanted. Then I adjusted the Bump Fall Off a little bit. If I bring this all the way up to 1, you can see it creates a harsh shadow on the planet, and if I lower the amount, it feathers that line and creates a softer shadow. So you can also tweak that to get the exact shadow that you want. I like mine to be somewhere in between, and I left it around 90. You can also change the bump map intensity, and this will adjust the amount of texture that's on the surface of the planet. You can do something really crazy by increasing it a lot to where it'll look like this, or keep the amount lower to achieve a more subtle look where it looks more realistic. I set mine to around 2. Also, I went into the Render tab and turned off Use Default Lights. I noticed leaving this checked would cause the plugin to glitch sometimes, so I just turned it off. Next, if you come up to the Rotation Settings, you can adjust the X, Y, and Z to rotate the planet to exactly which side you want it to be on. I keyframed the Y rotation to animate the planet to slowly rotate during my clip. To do that, I made sure I was at the beginning of the comp, then hit the Y rotation stopwatch, creating a keyframe there, then went to the end of the comp and adjusted the Y rotation to where I wanted it, and this made a keyframe at the end. Now when I play that back, you can see my planet is slowly rotating. Then the next thing that I did was create some stars for the background. To do this, I went up to layer and created another solid. I named this stars and added the VC orb effect to this layer as well. And then I moved that layer underneath my Mars VC Orb layer. Next, I brought in the image of the stars in Milky Way and layered that underneath everything. I right-clicked that image, went to Transform, and fit it to the comp. And then I went ahead and turned this layer off. I also turned off the Mars VC Orb layer just for right now, but I'm going to come back in and turn that on in a little bit. So the next, I went into the VC Orb plugin on the stars layer and changed a few things. I went down to the map settings and loaded in the stars Milky Way image into the diffuse layer. Then inside of the material settings, I turned the specular all the way down to zero. I also changed the surface from front to back, and went up to the radius and turned it up pretty high to somewhere around 30,000. Next, I came down to the UV settings and changed the UV type from spherical to box. And also changed the UV repeat X and the UV repeat Y to 4. Then I came back over and turned back on the Mars VC orb layer, and just like that, I created a backdrop of stars for my planet. Now for this effect, since I want the camera to move through the window and continue out into space and keep zooming in on the planet, I need to animate the camera in the Mars composition. So in the Mars comp, I made sure I was at the beginning of that comp, selected the camera, 
hit C on the keyboard until I got to the track Z camera tool, then zoomed out a little so that Mars started farther away from the camera. And then I hit the stopwatch for the position, creating a keyframe at that point. Then I went to the end of the composition and zoomed in until Mars was closer to the camera and ended exactly where I wanted it to be positioned in frame. After that, I jumped back into my outer space window composition and brought in the Mars comp and stacked that underneath all my layers. Also, I don't need to turn this into a 3D layer since I already applied 3D camera movement to it and it's just a simple push in for both the dolly footage and the Mars layer. Now when I play this back, everything looks good except one more thing that I need to do. Towards the end of the clip, when the camera is coming up on the window, the footage of the window disappears because the clip ends right here. But I want the camera to keep moving through the window out into space. So I selected the dolly footage layer, went to the beginning of the composition, brought up the scale, created a keyframe at that point, and then went to the end of this clip one frame before it ended while the window was still on screen and then just scaled up the window until it wasn't in frame anymore. And now that created the look like the camera is traveling through the window out into space. But okay, so that's it. I just added some color grading and music and that gave me my final effect.